Hey, Chris here from CTI Music Ministries with another tutorial video on Roland's Juno DI editor software. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the keyboard range page and a couple of other pages and we're going to be pulling apart a perform file for This Is Amazing Grace by Phil Wickham. Uh, and just to remind you, if you are a musician and you're interested in serving around the world in a ministry capacity using your gifts to share the gospel worldwide, check us out on join.cti music.org and learn uh, how you can get involved with our ministry. The best way to learn editor is probably to load up or perform and just start picking it apart. Uh, here you're looking at This is Amazing Grace. You can see it's loaded here on the keyboard. It's also loaded here in editor. A uh, quick demo of the song you'll find somewhere on this YouTube channel, but just to give you a sense of where these key ranges are. <laughs> Uh, the chorus, similar. And there's only two other feels in the song. I've been playing a thick pad down here. Uh, but for the chorus, I'm sorry, for the verses, we thin it out a little bit. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? We also use this for the breakdown. And the only other thing is this cute little turnaround in the verse. The king of glory, the king above all kings. Do -do 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 -do. So the mixer window that we're looking at on default, you can change a couple of things. You can change the relative volumes of the parts. You can change uh, their send to chorus and reverb, which I will cover in a later video. And you can also solo and mute them. Uh, but I spend much more of my time on what I think is a much more useful screen. And that's going to be this one, keyboard range. So here on the keyboard range screen, you can see uh, each part, 1 through 16, labeled down the side, and you can see this switch column, which tells you if the part is turned on. So you can see here that I am using six parts in this This Is Amazing Grace perform. Here you can see the key ranges of where they lay out across the keyboard. Something to note is that there are more keys shown in this window than are actually available on a Juno. If you look at your Juno, you'll see this split silk screen shown right here, and it points towards what we would consider to be middle C. This C is always identified as C4. Therefore, this is C5, C6, and C7, C3, C2. So the Juno runs from C2 to C7. And if we come down here to an unused part, we'll use it part 16, you can see that the low range is set to C minus 1. So if this is C2, we have C1, C0, and C-1, three octaves below the range of the keyboard. And if the highest key is C7, you'll see that this goes up to G9. So we've got quite a bit of range available. So let me actually back this down to demonstrate what the range of the keyboard itself is, the Juno itself. And you'll notice in order to get fine control over these editing sliders, you have to click it and then move your mouse way away. The further away you are, the more fine your control is. So this green bar now represents the range that's available on a Juno. And I think the reason they include additional ranges on here is in case you're controlling a Juno with an external MIDI controller that has more keys. But regardless of the settings, C4, this silkscreen C4, is always going to be constant. So if I use any transposition features like this octave knob here, it doesn't matter where I turn this, the pitch will sound lower, but C4 will always be C4. Okay, let me demonstrate each part for you. I'll solo them. Um, part six here, in fact, I'll switch these other ones off. We'll start with part six, which by the range on the keyboard, I can tell that that is the breakdown and verse pad. If I play lower than that, you won't hear it. And if I play higher than that, you won't hear anything. Uh, so similarly by range, part four, which I'll now turn on, is gonna be the so we get those two, um, and then you can see these two, parts three and five, appear to uh, occupy the same range. So if I turn on just part three, and now if I turn on just part five, so same key, but different notes. How are we doing that? In fact, if I look up here, part three and part five are even the same patch. The way we are detuning a patch on a particular part is in this window called all parameters. In all parameters, you can change a lot of the things that are uh, happening with a particular 
patch. You can change the octave on this page, but you notice we could also do that from the keyboard range page. Uh, and you can change level and pan, but we can do those from the mixer page as well. Some things that you can't do on other pages, most importantly including this uh, tuning setting here, you'll see on part 5 where the coarse tuning fader is up by 7. And so, whoops, I didn't mean to change that one. Control click will bring it back to zero. Moving this up by seven indicates that we have increased it by seven semitones. So part five is sounding seven semitones higher than part three. If I come back to the keyboard range page and turn on part three, now you can hear. So coarse is going to give you an increase by semitones and fine is going to give you an increase by cents. Looking at some of the other controls that you can change here, you can change the legato control. So if I go back to the keyboard range page and I select part four, which was uh, this verse one turnaround figure, you'll notice if I hold down multiple keys, it won't allow me to sound multiple sounds at once. It'll only allow me to play one note. So it's a monosynth. If I come back to uh, all parameters, Looking at part four, I can see that the mono poly switch is set to PAT, and that means do whatever the patch wants to do by default. When these patches are programmed, uh, they're set with some of these parameters, but you can override them. So if I wanted this to be a polysynth instead of a monosynth, I'd move it down to poly. Now I can play multiple notes at once, and you can hear each one attack. But if you force it to mono, or in this case leave it as patch, then as long as I'm holding a note down, it'll only attack it once. Uh, and it'll only allow you to play one note at a time. So I'm going to switch that back to patch because it's operating the way we want it to there. You can also change the pitch bend range, and it does a similar thing where it uses the patch default, which is usually going to be two semitones up and down. But if you want to change that, you can make it up to 24 cents up and down. I actually left it at 23 there, but you can see you get quite a bit more range in either direction. So again, uh, set that back to patch. You can scale that anywhere from 24 down to nothing. So you can actually disable the pitch bend that way. There's a number of other things on here that you can change that we may look at in a more advanced session, but notice that these offset knobs, uh, offset faders on the right, correspond roughly to the knobs that are on the front panel of the Juno. You can change, uh, you can override the uh, attack and uh, resonance and cutoff filter and decay and release here as well. Okay, back to the keyboard range. I think we've, uh, the only ones we haven't demonstrated now are parts one and two, which obviously are the... Here again, if we select part one and we select part two, actually they're different patches. So if we turn off part two, we'll hear what part one is doing. And same thing if we select part two. Now something to note, uh, when I'm in this page, if I turn off part one, it usually won't let you turn off part one and hear anything without it. So I think we're actually hearing part one and part two layered together. So there's another way around that. If you go back to the mixer page, you can actually just solo from here. So there's part one, and now if we solo part two, we'll hear that it's an octave higher. So that's how we get those sounds together. And if you look back at the keyboard range page, you'll see over here the octave offset. I'm dropping one of them two octaves and one of them only one octave. So that's how we're getting them to be an octave apart. So that's an overview of the keyboard range page. It's much more powerful in this view than the simple split button that you get on the keyboard itself. 
All right, that's it for this video. Uh, in some future videos, we'll dive into effects. We'll try and build a perform from scratch, uh, and we'll maybe look at some of the more complicated performs that we've done here at CTI and explore some other features of Editor. If there are particular things that you would like to see me do a tutorial video on, leave that in the comments. If there are particular songs that you would like to see programmed, leave that in the comments, and maybe we'll do a video putting one of those together. In the meantime, check us out at CTI ctimusic.org for more information about our ministry and if you would like to consider joining one of our teams check out join.ctimusic.org